Episode 296. Winnie felt especially sorry for April. April looked at Winnie while stroking her hair. Does it have something to do with whatever happened between you two? Asked Winnie. Seeing the concerned and anxious look on Winnie's face, April felt pity for her and also felt a little sad. Seriously, Winnie had been so worried about Ben all this time. If anything happened to Ben, she would be more worried for him than she would ever be for herself. Abruptly, April asked with a complicated look, Winnie, I want to ask you a question. Do you trust me? Winnie paused briefly and had a bad feeling rising from her heart. But still, she nodded and said, April, I trust you. We've only known each other for around a year, but we know each other's past better than anyone else. I clearly know what kind of person you are. April sighed and nodded. Then Winnie first spoke out with her guests. Was there a conflict between you and Ben? Was it because he was always late for work and made you work late with him? Winnie, I've met all sorts of unprofessional actors and actresses at work. April interrupted her and continued. Winnie, I hope you can prepare yourself for what I'm about to tell you. Winnie licked her lips, which weren't really dry. She was a pretty calm person, but when it came to Ben... She became nervous even before anything started. April dropped the towel, frowned, and said, Winnie, I don't know how deeply you and Ben loved each other back in high school. You even gave up on your own family for him and came to a strange place to study and work alone. So I guess you must love him so, so deeply. Many couples in a long-distance relationship break up in a year or two, but you two have been maintaining your relationship for nearly four years. Haven't you wondered if there's something wrong during the past four years? Winnie blinked. She tried to ignore the uneasy feeling in her heart while stuttering. What? What is wrong? I've asked Jennifer about it. Earlier, she worked with a Korean male star. They were in the crew together every day. She said that the agency was indeed very strict with him, but it wasn't so bad that he could only make a personal call every four or even five days and that he always needed to be extra careful. Besides, no matter how busy he was, he always had a couple of hours of sleeping time a day, right? Did his company even hire people to watch him while he was sleeping? Winnie's delicate face started turning pale. April, are you trying to say that he doesn't care about me anymore? If he has fallen in love with someone else, if he doesn't love me anymore, he could have told me about it. I'm not someone who'd expose his scandals after breaking up. Winnie, Perhaps he still loves you. After all, you've done so much for him, so he made you a promise. He told you that as long as you become a star, you two can be together openly. He told you that he's still young. But how can you be sure that he will really keep his word when he reaches the top and becomes a real superstar? April sounded a little emotional. She wasn't blaming Winnie for being silly. She had been silly once, too. She simply disliked Ben. Winnie opened her mouth, paused briefly, and then asked in a dry voice, April, did something happen when you were in Beijing? Yes, April nodded. Because he stood you up, I went to talk to him. I asked him to treat you well, but he got angry. He said that I'm mad at him because he refused to help me when I was competing against the other dubbers for roles in the game. He thought I was bearing grudges for that. I felt really annoyed. But still, it wasn't a big thing. He doesn't know me, after all. However, his assistant told the director that I tried to seduce him. So the director immediately switched my schedule with Haley's and scolded me. Winnie's heart sank. She was devastated and disappointed. She was embarrassed, too. He was her boyfriend. He was the one who questioned her good friend's character. His assistant was the one who hurt her good friend. She would never believe that April would try to seduce Ben. April had Aaron, after all, a good man who loved her to no end. How could... His assistant, did he consider your reputation in the industry at all? Yeah, his assistant was really cocky. He often conversed with Ben in Korean and told him not to bother with low-grade people like us. They thought I didn't understand Korean, of course. April scoffed. They don't know that I know Korean, Japanese, English, and even French. Winnie felt miserable listening to her. She knew that April wasn't someone who would make a mountain out of a molehill. 
There must have been several unpleasant encounters for her to get so disgusted. April sighed when she saw the upset look in Winnie's eyes. These are small things. I wouldn't have told you if not for other things. I went to look for Ben after that, and he told me that he didn't know about what his assistant did. His assistant acted on his own accord, and he would help me clear things up. I lied to him, saying that I would tell you about what had happened, and he said that I was trying to sow discord between the two of you. He threatened me, saying that he would ruin my career if I said a word. Winnie wanted to dig a hole for herself. She often complimented Ben in front of her. She hadn't expected him to act so repulsively in front of her good friend. She stuttered after a long while. He didn't used to. He wasn't like this. Maybe, maybe he got famous and is acting a little overboard. Well, it would have been fine if he was just acting a little arrogant. No one can really preserve the entirety of themselves after receiving such adoration and fame, after all. But it would be scary if he became unrecognizable. April continued, When I left, I overheard his assistant talking to him in Korean again. He thought that Ben fancied me, and Ben told him that there are women like me all over the streets. He sounded very nasty, but that wasn't all. His assistant said that young mistress wouldn't be pleased if she knew about this and cautioned him to treasure young mistress. Ben only chuckled when he heard that, and he didn't deny anything. Young mistress? Winnie's mind was a blank. Her eyes were soulless. She looked like a little girl who had just lost her favorite doll. Yeah, young mistress. April nodded. She hated seeing Winnie hurt like this. Winnie, I understand your pain. I would imagine it's the same kind as when Isaac brought Rosaria to me. I was like you, and I thought that my world had collapsed. I only told you this because I didn't want you to be clueless in love. Think about it. Someone that his assistant calls young mistress? She should come from an important family. She might even be the daughter of someone important in his company. Winnie asked in a daze, You mean to say Ben found himself a rich man's daughter? April frowned. I can't be sure. But a normal man would deny things when someone says something like that. He should have clarified and denied relations with this young mistress. But he didn't say a word about it. He just smiled. That could either mean that he was just playing around with her or there was really something going on between them. Winnie was taking in short gasps of air. It pained April to see her pale, small face. She knew these things, but she needed April to break them down for her bit by bit before she can confront the reality of things. April? Winnie was stunned for a short while, then she felt as if someone was banging her hard against the floor. April, I don't understand. Ben... When did he become like that? That is not the person I know. He was brave, honest, sunny. He told me that no matter what he turned into or how high he reached, he'd always love me. He said that in the future he'd sin at the peak of his life and announce to the world that I'm his girlfriend. Winnie, it might not be exactly like what I said. Perhaps I misunderstood. Winnie was panicking, so April tried to comfort her. There are some things I just wanted you to know. You have to understand that you shouldn't pin all your hopes on that person, and you shouldn't make him your sole goal. You have already spent your youth for him, so I don't want you to waste all your good years on him. Even if he's only flirting with another woman, to me, it'd be intolerable. If he flirts with other women before getting married, what will he do after he gets married? So don't hold your breath waiting for him. But... I have already pinned all my hopes on him. Winnie was now overwhelmed by the confused, helpless feeling. She wanted to cry. My parents didn't want me to be with him and become a singer, but for him, I came here without hesitation. When I left home, I swore to my parents that I'd prove it to them. I said that Ben would marry me and that I wouldn't come home until that day. I thought about marrying him and what our marriage would be like. Her eyes reddened and filled with tears as she was talking. April held her hands. Her hands were even shaking. In fact, she wanted very much to say to Winnie that from the time Ben went to Korea alone and started his career successfully to the present, when his career was like the sun in broad daylight, he easily stood out from the fierce competition. Was he really capable and lucky? Or had someone powerful been supporting him? Winnie was smart. 
She could have thought of that, but she wasn't willing to think about the ugly side of that person. Winnie, I can only tell you that you have the right to choose. April sighed. You can turn a blind eye and pretend that nothing happened. After all, he's not breaking up with you. You can also break things off with him. That way you'll no longer live for him. You'll live a life for yourself. There's another way, which is to let things stay where they are. No matter which way you choose, I'll respect you. Such a long relationship can't end so easily after all. In a relationship, everyone had their own reasons to make choices. April wanted Winnie to make the decision by herself, even though she really didn't like Ben. To be honest, she felt that Ben wasn't even a decent person. Winnie stayed silent for quite a while. April was right. Such a long relationship couldn't end so easily. She just didn't know where to start. She felt really sorry for April. Earlier, she had asked Ben to help April, but he refused. Later on, he accused April of bearing a grudge. Now, he had even caused a problem with April's work. That had already sowed discord between her and Ben. Ben didn't respect her friend. Unlike him, Aaron introduced her to a music company and helped her with her career because she was April's friend. Even though he did that to get revenge on Mary, he hadn't really needed to go that far. He did it simply because she was April's friend. Episode 297, Break Up Not to mention, there was a possibility that Ben had a fling with another woman. The more she thought about it, the more heartbroken she felt. Although April hadn't said some things, she knew them deep down in her heart. Ben might not just be flirting with that young mistress. He might have even used her for his own purposes. Yeah, every time he called her... He acted so secretively. Was he really that scared of his company? Maybe someone was with him. She had suspected it before, but she never allowed herself to project her suspicions further. She didn't think her high school sweetheart would do something so nasty. April went into the kitchen to cook, leaving Winnie alone on the sofa. When she emerged from the kitchen with food, Winnie was already gone. She sighed. Winnie was calling Ben by the roadside. The user was unavailable. She walked around for a long time, and she kept dialing his number. He didn't pick up her phone calls. Winnie's heart was stone cold by the end of it. That was her boyfriend, uncontactable when she needed to hear him the most. What was he doing then? Was he with another woman? Winnie didn't know what to do with herself. She thought of ending things between them, but the thought cut deep in her heart, physically hurting her. She felt sick thinking about forgetting things and holding on to the relationship as well. She got a call back from him three days later at 11 o'clock at night. When she saw her phone buzz with his caller ID, she was still in a daze. She'd been waiting every minute of her life. She was always checking her phone, even in class, always distracted. Every day she waited, the colder her heart became. She picked up the call and Ben sounded apologetic over the line. Winnie, I'm sorry. Things have been rough with Fun You recently and the company has been scrambling to fix things. I've been swamped. Sorry to return your call so late. Winnie couldn't help but ask. It's quite a big issue, but are you really that busy that you can't even return a call? I waited for three days before I heard anything from you. You could have sent me a text at least. Don't you have a minute to yourself? Winnie, why are you being so demanding today? We've always managed thus far. Ben was put off. Winnie bit her lip. She was trying to stop herself from crying. Yeah, we've always managed thus far. I've never thought much about it. Ben was silent for a while before he suddenly asked. Did April say something to you? What could she say? Winnie asked sarcastically. I don't know what she said to you, but I don't think she would have said anything good. Winnie, do you trust me or her? Winnie fell silent and replied, Ben, April is my good friend. I know for a fact that she was around when I was lonely, not you. She was the one who encouraged me when things got hard. You don't trust me then. 
Ben sounded disappointment and angry. Did you know that my image has gone to ruins because of her? My image that I worked so hard on to be able to come back. I have all these controversies surrounding me now. People are criticizing me for having a poor work ethic. Winnie was stunned. Ben, they had evidence that you were late to your recordings. I waited for you there before. You were more than an hour late. I was running late because of other events on my schedule. I didn't do it on purpose. Who isn't late nowadays anyway? Ben defended himself angrily. Yeah, you can afford to be late every day now that you were popular. How can you push the blame to someone else without reflecting on yourself? When he felt that he sounded unfamiliar. Ben, when did you become like this? I'm always like this. Hearing her words, Ben was a little angry because she actually chose to side with April. Besides, I can't do whatever I want sometimes. I was late because the company didn't arrange the schedule well or because of some unexpected situations. How can that be my fault? No matter why you were late, you don't seem sorry at all. On the contrary, you're blaming others. Winnie felt a little uncomfortable. Ben, I sometimes attend events and work with stars too. Last year I took part in the New Year's Gala at the TV station. I saw Kester Sanchez there. He's a very well-respected singer who has won the Golden Melody Award a couple of times. He wasn't like you. He even got there an hour early to coordinate better with the TV station and everyone else. How can you compare me with him? Ben said without thinking. He used to be popular, but he's only a has-been star now. He doesn't have much work to do, so starting to work earlier or later makes no difference to him. I'm not like him. The commercial value of every minute that I have is way higher than his. Winnie couldn't believe it. April's words made her have doubts, and Ben's words allowed her to see him as a whole new person. She didn't realize it before. Was it because the conversations that they had before were too short? It might also be because they never talked about these kinds of things. Her Ben had changed. He became so snobbish. Ben, have you forgotten about your original intention? You said that you only wanted others to hear you sing. Why do you think so much of money now? You already have a lot of money. Winnie, I can only say that you don't know me well enough, or maybe you don't care about money because your family's rich. Your parents didn't want us to be together because my family wasn't as rich as yours. Isn't that right? Ben said in a deep voice, emphasizing the last three words. So, for money and fame, you hooked up with that so-called young mistress? Winnie asked. Ben stayed silent for a couple of seconds and then responded in a deep and cold voice. What do you mean? Ben, April speaks many languages. I'm afraid you don't know that yet. She has passed Korean test band six, so she might speak better Korean than you. About those words that your assistant said and those small tricks you guys played, she knew it all. She just didn't point it out. Winnie chuckled with an extra soft and gentle voice. However, tears were gushing out of her eye sockets and she couldn't stop it. For a moment, Ben's brain was blank. He was pretty shocked to learn that April understood Korean. But soon he calmed down and said, I didn't think she'd even make up ridiculous lies like that about me. It's because I caused the company to change her schedule. That was my assistant's mistake. I promised her that I'd clarify it for her, but she pulled strings, found an unknown boy, and had me replaced. I was disgraced because of her. I didn't blame her for that, but now she's trying to frame me? Winnie couldn't even bear listening to him. Enough! Ben, that person you're talking about is my friend. She's a friend who's been helping your girlfriend the whole time. I share an apartment with April. Don't I know what kind of person she is? I never told you that I signed the contract with a music company and got good resources for my career because April found someone to help me. I'm not silly enough to doubt a person who has helped me. What have you ever done for me? It's been so many years. How have you ever helped me? I don't know if there's anything happening between you and another woman or not, but what you just said makes me feel like we're no longer two people from the same world. Based on your current value, I think you might really hook up with another woman. Let's break up. If there's a misunderstanding, we can resolve it. But there's a problem with your moral quality. 
I think we're no longer good matches for each other. Ben was shaking from anger. You think my character is flawed? Winnie, have you been brainwashed by her? We've been together for so many years. How can you break up with me over an outsider? April was never an outsider to me. She's also not the only reason why I'm breaking up with you. Winnie was trying her best to hold back her tears. Ben, as your ex-girlfriend, I sincerely wish you the best on your career. I hope you'll be able to rectify your mistakes and improve to become a better person. You never know what will happen. It'll be best for you if you stay down to earth and do the right things. I can't hold on to this relationship anymore. I gave you the best years of my youth, but I don't want to give you my remaining years in the future. Goodbye. She hung up immediately after. She was the one who hung up first this time. He was always the one who had to go first. She craved hearing more of his voice, his breathing. She didn't need to work hard for anyone anymore. What was she going to do with herself now? Who was she working towards being a singer for? Who did she leave her family for? She had nothing to look towards. Winnie sat on her bed like a fool. The next day, April woke up to see Winnie cooking noodles in the kitchen. She felt warmed by her gesture. Winnie, you are so great. I get free food when I'm with you. When I stayed with Aaron, I had to cook for that man like a slave. April suddenly noticed her red-rimmed eyes and she was taken aback. What? What happened? She had never seen Winnie like that before. Winnie lowered her head quickly and scooped the noodles into a bowl. I broke up with Ben. April was shocked. She felt bad as she looked at Winnie. I'm sorry if it's because of what I said. No. I just realized when I was talking to him that we don't share the same values anymore. Winnie shook her head sadly. Her voice turned hoarse. He has changed. April nodded. She trusted Winnie's taste. Ben must have been a good person in the past. He was just not the same as before after entering the entertainment industry. I realized that we have different upbringings and we wouldn't be happy even if we forced ourselves to stay together. We haven't really fought till now because we never lived together. I'm sure we would have had our fair share of conflict in the future if we married. That's true. April sighed. Just like how I almost broke up with Aaron on several occasions. Winnie sighed as well. I'm too embarrassed to go back to my parents now. And the new semester is starting. I guess I have to see this to the end. I'm going to get a job and earn money. See where life takes me, I guess. Yeah, that's the attitude. Don't let the opportunities go to waste. You might even be more popular than Ben in the future. He might come crawling back to you. By then, you could just cast him a side glance and brush him off. How dare he try to pursue you when he's not that famous yet? April burst out into laughter. Winnie burst out laughing as well, forgetting her sorrows momentarily. I'm pretty excited now that you've painted such a beautiful picture. Wait till you become famous. April patted her shoulders. Yeah, I'm still far from him. Winnie sighed and decided to pick herself up. Forget it. Let's eat now. I need the strength to fight and make him regret his decisions. Yeah, if you still have any grievances or need someone to drink with you, I'm always here. Be warned, I'm not the good kind of drunk. Winnie was stunned. How bad? I don't know. Ever since I drank that one time, Sylvia doesn't want to go out drinking with me again. April shrugged. She wouldn't be asking April to accompany her then. She'd save them both the embarrassment. Episode 298 Because She's Already Pregnant Winnie put the noodles into the bowls and then gave the large bowl to April. April finished the noodles and even drank the broth. After that, she sighed. Why am I still not full? Winnie even burped when hearing that. Half a bowl of noodles had already made her feel stuffed. April had a full bowl of noodles but still felt like it was not enough. Winnie really admired her for her great appetite. You can have some of mine. I'm already very full anyway. Thank you. April pushed her bowl forward. Winnie gave April almost all the noodles in her bowl and then sat there watching April eat happily. She had known April was a good eater since long ago. April was always slim, added with the fact that she had a lot to do every day. She didn't gain weight easily. 
Winnie was very jealous of her. Unlike April, she could gain weight very easily. Um, have you realized that your recent appetite is better than usual? Winnie couldn't help but ask. No? April paused slightly. Before, such a large bowl of noodles that I made would be enough for you, said Winnie. And lately, I always find you eating snacks at night. Every time we ate in the cafeteria, you had more rice than the last time. April blinked and picked up the bowl to drink the broth. Are you pregnant? Winnie asked. April spit out the broth in her mouth, saying, Don't scare me. What's to be scared of? Haven't you always wanted to have Mr. Bennett's baby? Winnie sighed. If April got pregnant, she could finally stop being a spy. Being a spy felt pretty awful. April was a little confused. She did want to get pregnant, but it could be scary when it happened suddenly. No way, she said. Why not? You're so passionate. You can do it anywhere. I doubt you have condoms in your pockets at all times, said Winnie mercilessly. April raised the bowl to cover her face and coughed slightly. Yes, they had done it just a couple days ago. She had skipped a period. Did that have something to do with the pregnancy? Realizing that possibility, April started to feel uneasy. She wanted to buy a pregnancy test right away and find out if she was pregnant or not. After breakfast, she passed by a hospital. She wanted to go in and buy a pregnancy test, but she noticed that someone was following her stealthily, so she didn't do it. She really admired Esma now. To confirm if she had really broken up with Aaron or not, Esma even hired people to stalk her. Esma seemed to have way too much free time. Well, she didn't need to work, so April assumed that she had lots of free time. She couldn't ask Winnie to buy a pregnancy test for her, as it could still make Esma suspect her. After a slight hesitation, she called Esma and said, I want to remind you that I've been broken up with Aaron for nearly a month. Prepare the evidence you mentioned. Don't swallow your words when the time comes. Esma's silvery chuckles could be heard. April, to be honest, I don't believe you. Aaron went to New Jersey for a business trip a couple of days ago, and you were in New Jersey too. That's kind of a coincidence, isn't it? I went to New Jersey for work. April was a little worried, as she didn't know if Esma had hired people to stalk her in New Jersey. We never saw each other. Didn't you see that he's always with that lawyer called Kiera? He's falling in love with her. Are you satisfied now? Yeah. I tore you two apart and gave that lawyer an opportunity. Esma sneered. April worried that she might change her mind. I can't do anything about that. I don't have the power to control him. Kira has been fond of him for a long time. I broke up with him, so she grasped the opportunity to get close to him. You can tell your daughter to do the same. Speaking of her daughter, Esma was furious. No matter what she said to try to convince her, she wouldn't have any of it. She had said she didn't want to implicate Aaron, and now she was sleeping in the armed forces dormitories. Are you going to go back on your word? April asked nervously. I wouldn't be sure if I were to find out that you're still talking to him. Or lying to me, Esma said angrily before she hung up. April sighed. She wasn't sure if Esma would give her the evidence now. She had to find another way. Wednesday at the Splingo Corporation. Marvin received a call from Lewis and frowned. He waited a while before reporting back to Aaron. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Lewis said they wouldn't let Miss Eisenberg go. Aaron slammed on the keyboard and raised his voice. Don't they know who I am? I did tell them. Marvin was helpless. They said that since Miss Eisenberg has a beautiful voice and her technique and skills are top-notch, they wouldn't let such a talent go easily because they wouldn't be able to find an appropriate replacement. What was wrong with Mr. Lewis? Aaron rubbed his forehead. Marvin continued. I think the man who thinks that Miss Eisenberg is extremely beautiful might have helped her out. I heard that he's good friends with Morris Lewis. Speaking of Morris, he's a prodigy when it comes to programming and software. Geniuses are often friends with geniuses. Do you think that the man who has a crush on April is a genius as well? Aaron laughed mockingly. Geniuses are nothing but theory. They're all fools. Marvin was used to this. His boss was narrow-minded and petty. He wouldn't be himself if he didn't insult his love rivals. Aaron crossed his arms in frustration. He hadn't expected Morris Lewis to ignore his request. Seemed like April would have to go to New Jersey in the middle of the month after all. April would never agree if he asked her not to go. 
Just when he was in the middle of his dilemma, Henry called. Mr. Bennett, I'm back. You asked me to take a look at Miss Eisenberg's health before? You're back. I'll take you there immediately. Aaron closed his laptop. All right. Aaron put down his phone and started putting on his jacket. Deliver this document to Mr. Richard. Marvin grimaced. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Richard has gone fishing? Aaron was stunned. With Jennifer. He had been listening to Richard talk about courting Jennifer all day long. No, with his friends, Mr. Max and them, if I'm not wrong. Aaron frowned. He's always fooling around with Max and that bunch of rascals. He's not treating his job seriously. No wonder he can't get any girls. I should have let him stay in the Great Northwest as a bachelor for the rest of his life. Marvin rubbed his nose. These documents. Call him and ask him to come back to handle these, Aaron ordered. Before he left his office, Aaron walked back to snap a picture of the thick stack of documents. Marvin didn't know what he was up to at first until he opened a social media application half an hour later while waiting beneath Dr. Henry's building. Mr. Bennett had posted the picture he had taken earlier with the caption, A certain vice president left a pile of work for me to do while he was out having fun at the lake. With a nonsense work ethic and no sense of responsibility, I hope he stays single for the rest of his life. Jennifer commented below, he really might stay single for the rest of his life. Poor Vice President Richard hadn't seen the post yet. He would be sad if he saw it, as his good friend was saying bad things about him in the Instagram moments again. April was sitting in the classroom, waiting for class to begin. She was a little bored, so she picked up her phone and checked the latest Instagram moments. Soon she saw Aaron's post. Under that post, Richard had already left his comment. Aaron, don't you try to discredit me. April, the president wants you in his office. One of April's classmates abruptly patted her back. April gave a start, then felt that Aaron had something to do with it. After about 10 minutes of walking, she knocked on the door of the office and walked in. Aaron was sitting on the couch with Dr. Henry, legs and arms crossed, looking like an elite businessman. As April came in, he raised his eyebrows and said, President Torres, this student of yours doesn't seem to respect you at all. She made you wait 20 minutes. As he was clearly trying to stir up trouble, April responded impatiently, The school is huge. Of course it took that long to walk over here. Sensing the tense atmosphere, the president hurriedly tried to make peace. It does require that span of time. Um, April, Mr. Bennett brought a doctor here to check on you. Miss Eisenberg, please sit down. Dr. Henry smiled and took out the stethoscope. Once he put the stethoscope in his ears, Aaron grasped his hands and stared at him with dagger eyes. Where are you looking at? Dr. Henry responded, Mr. Bennett, didn't you ask me to give Miss Eisenberg a checkup? I'm going to listen to her heartbeat. Her heart is perfectly healthy. I want you to find out why her period is late. Does she have a kidney weakness? Aaron's handsome face wore a grim look. No other man would ever be allowed to touch his woman's breast. April felt slightly awkward. President Taurus was still there. It was embarrassing to mention her period. And kidney weakness? Wasn't that a man's problem? It's just osculation. If Miss Eisenberg has a cough problem, any doctor would have to do it. Dr. Henry felt a little helpless, but still he put away the stethoscope and asked April to reach out her hand. Then he put a hand on her wrist to feel her pulse. Thankfully, Aaron wasn't possessive enough to forbid him from touching her hand or he would have no way to find out what problem April had. April was pretty nervous. Yesterday, she had started to wonder if she was pregnant. What should she do if she was pregnant? She would definitely make Aaron suffer. Dr. Henry spent a while feeling her pulse, knitting his eyebrows together in a deeper and deeper frown. Switch hands, he said. He spent another while holding April's other wrist. Once he took away his hand, Aaron asked him patiently, How's it going? Should she take some medicine to induce menstruation? Dr. Henry smiled. She might lose the baby if she took that kind of medicine. Aaron froze in shock, as if someone had just poked his acupuncture point. Baby? What did the doctor just say? April had a baby? April was stunned as well. She had thought that she might be pregnant, but she wasn't sure. When Dr. Henry confirmed it, she was completely astonished. So, was she going to be a mother at such a young age? She hadn't even finished college yet. She wasn't prepared for that. Even though she had signed the pregnancy contract with Aaron, she didn't think that she could get pregnant so easily. Henry, make it clear. Aaron excitedly grasped Dr. Henry's arm. Mr. Bennett, 
Miss Eisenberg is pregnant. That's why her period's late. Dr. Henry laughed through clenched teeth as he was suffering pain. Episode 299 When Did You Find Out About Esma? Aaron was staring with his eyes wide open. He released Dr. Henry and paced around the office multiple times before stopping in front of April. He bent forward and stared hard at her belly. It was so flat. How could there be a baby in there? His baby! He was thrilled as he rubbed his cheek all smiles like a silly boy. I told you there was a chance even during your safe period. I'm quite formidable. I can take down the safe period any time. Look, it's only been a few days and you're already pregnant. Damn, your skills have improved again. <laughs> Impressive. April was flabbergasted. How could she have gotten pregnant in a few days? It wouldn't even be realistic in a television series. Dr. Henry was fighting back laughter. I don't think the sperm and egg would have implanted itself within a few days. Nobody would be able to tell if she was pregnant or not. I think Miss Eisenberg has been pregnant for about a month now, judging from her pulse. Aaron was stunned and lowered his head while he paused to think. Suddenly, it all made sense, and he pounded his fist into his palm. I know! It must have been that time in the car. Either that or that time on the dinner table. <laughs> Principal Torres spat out a mouthful of tea. Dr. Henry snuck a look at April and nearly gave a thumbs up. The two of them were so liberal and passionate, no wonder Aaron was so smitten. No wonder. April was embarrassed. She stared at Aaron viciously and begged him to shut up. She wanted to crawl into a hole and hide there. Did he have to let the whole world know what they did in the car and on the dining table? Principal Torres was her principal, after all. All right, stop talking. She pinched Aaron's arm forcefully. Aaron ignored her and looked at Dr. Henry gleefully. It must be a girl, right? She'll be so pretty, cute, and intelligent. Dr. Henry sighed. Every man who learned that they would be a dad suddenly acted like a fool. Mr. Bennett, well, I... That must be it. Aaron turned to grasp April's hands in his own and looked properly around. April, you're so amazing. You've given me a little princess. April's expression was dark. Their baby was probably just a small embryo and he could already tell that it was going to be a little princess. Fat chance. Uh, Mr. Bennett, could you hear me out? Dr. Henry muttered awkwardly. This isn't the most accurate form of confirmation. You should take Miss Eisenberg to do an ultrasound at the hospital. Aaron's face froze and he turned to glare at him. What do you mean? After all of this, you're not even sure if I'm going to have a little princess? Dr. Henry was about to cry. Of course he couldn't be sure if it was a little princess. It could be a little prince. Mr. Bennett was so unreasonable. Finally, April spoke up for her. You'll only know the gender of the baby after three months, if I'm not wrong. There's no way Dr. Henry could know. Principal Torres said enthusiastically, I think you can find out within a month. April glared at Aaron. What do you mean, anyway? You're not going to love the baby if it's a boy? Don't you want a baby boy to continue your family's name? That's so dated, Aaron said unceremoniously. What age are we living in now? How can a little boy compare to a cute little princess? Boys are like dog piss. April stroked her own belly. That was it. She wished that it wouldn't be a boy so that he wouldn't be despised by his own father. Seeing the look on his face, April couldn't help but remind him. Don't forget that you were a boy too. Aaron pondered seriously and then responded, That's right. Two people with the same gender repel each other. Haven't you heard about that? April didn't reply. She would remember this. It seemed that Aaron and a lot of women were attracted to each other. Hearing what Aaron said, President Taurus even wanted to cry. He really wanted a boy, but his wife gave him a bunch of girls. Since we need to confirm it, go to the hospital with me now. Aaron stood up eagerly. April realized what had happened when Aaron dragged her to the door. No, I can't go to the hospital now, she said. 
Why? Aaron figured it out once he asked that question. Because of Esma? He asked. April was stunned. That was as shocking as the fact that she was pregnant. How do you know? She asked. So many thoughts popped up in her head at that moment. She couldn't figure out how Aaron knew about that. She had only told Kiara and Winnie. Did Kiara tell you about it? I'm so smart and capable. Do I need her to remind me of that? Aaron's chiseled face wore an unhappy look. He didn't tell her the truth because first he wanted to punish her. And second, he wanted her to have his baby. Now she was punished and was pregnant with his baby. She would never be able to run away from him. So there was no reason for him to keep pretending. However, he didn't want to talk to her about that now as they were in the president's office and Dr. Henry was there too. He dragged her quickly to the stairs, but suddenly he realized that she was pregnant. So he hurriedly stopped and lifted April to his chest. What are you doing? Put me down! April gave a start. They were in the school's office building so school leaders could be seen everywhere. How could he do that? I can't. Aaron wore a serious frown. These are stairs. What's wrong with stairs? You were pregnant. It's not safe for you to walk up and down stairs. What if you slipped? I'll just carry you down. After saying that, Aaron carried her quickly downstairs. April put her arms tightly around his neck with fright. Please, this is even more dangerous, she thought. Downstairs, when Aaron put April into his car, Dr. Henry hurriedly caught up with him and said, Mr. Bennett, wait, I didn't have my car. Give me a ride. Go and take a taxi. I'm going to the hospital. Also, if I get to the hospital and find that April is not pregnant, I'll destroy you. Aaron said and then shut the car door. Dr. Henry was left speechless. How could Aaron just kick him down the ladder like that? He had come here especially for him. But after he did his job, Mr. Bennett threw him away like a piece of rag and even threatened him. However, he did hope that he hadn't misdiagnosed April. In the car, Marvin turned and said to Aaron with surprise, Mr. Bennett, is Miss Eisenberg in a serious condition? Why are you going to the hospital? It's pretty serious indeed. She's pregnant. Aaron chuckled. Marvin opened his mouth wide in shock. A short while later, he hurriedly smiled at Aaron and said, Mr. Bennett, congratulations! You're going to be a father! The look on Aaron's handsome face was beyond excited. Don't be jealous of me. Even though you're a couple years older than me, you'll become a father too. Olive seems to be a good girl. She's a little clumsy, but at least she has a good heart. Mr. Lewis and Olive? April was surprised. She felt great pity. She thought that Marvin would have a chance to be with Winnie, as she had broken up with her boyfriend. She thought that Marvin would have a chance to be with Winnie, as she had broken up with her boyfriend. But unexpectedly, Marvin was with Olive now. He was a nice guy, actually. Even though he was only an assistant, he had a great network of contacts and he was capable and thoughtful. He would take good care of Winnie. No. Marvin was frustrated. Mr. Bennett, that's not very nice of you. You have been saying terrible things about Olive and that girl has been avoiding me ever since then. Now that you're in a good mood again, you're saying that we're a compatible match? Aaron said casually, I was in a foul mood then. It was insensitive of you two to appear to be happily in love in front of me. Marvin grimaced. When did I ever do that? She merely bought me a mug. She's saying that you're her cup of tea. Isn't that obnoxious? Aaron grunted. Marvin didn't wish to defend himself further. April smiled. I thought that assistant Marvin might stand a chance now that Winnie has broken up with her boyfriend. I guess not then. Marvin was stunned. His eyes looked hopeful. Winnie is single now? Yeah, they just broke up a few days ago. Aaron looked at his assistant and said coolly, You're thinking of Olive on one end and Winnie on the other? You're so fickle-minded. That's not true. Marvin felt wronged and he continued, Winnie is like a rare flower on the cliff. 
She might be a little out of my reach. She might not even like me that way. Olive is a quiet, cute girl, like a girl next door. She could marry me and we could spend the rest of our lives together. She might be more suitable for me. I don't know. Aaron frowned and quickly reached for April's hands. I only know that you should go after whoever you like. Don't flirt around like that. Mr. Bennett, not everyone can just get the girl like you. Marvin sighed. How could you think that you're not good enough for Winnie as my assistant? I'm quite disappointed that you would think that way. Aaron said, You've been someone I value for so many years. I approve of your capabilities and potential. You earn quite a bit too, don't you? Your yearly salary is over a million dollars, and you dabble in investments as well. You don't smoke or drink, you cook well, and you do chores. I would rate you 70 points as a man. I'm 100 points, of course. Marvin was shocked at his sudden outburst of affection. He had never heard his boss compliment him like this before. No wonder people said that men changed when they became dads. He had grown more compassionate. Mr. Bennett, do you think I can court Winnie then? Marvin snuck a look at April, and she didn't look like she was going to oppose the idea. He heaved a sigh of relief. Miss Eisenberg, do you think that Winnie would like someone like me? I don't know. It really depends on the individual when it comes to feelings. April said, I don't think women are always looking for material qualities in men or how they look. We're just looking for guys who will show us care and provide us warmth. Aaron nodded. Anyway, they're looking for men like me. You might not become me, but you can always learn from me. No way I'm learning from you, Marvin thought to himself. After the conversation ended, April turned to ask Aaron, You haven't told me. When did you find out about Esma? Who told you about it? Aaron cast her a side glance and said smugly, I found out long ago. I thought that your acting was terrible and I decided to play along with you. April was stunned. She found his statement sounded familiar. How dare he talk about her acting when he acts in such a dramatic and unrealistic way, she thought to herself. Did you know when I used Ryan to hurt you? April was puzzled. You were putting on an act when you stood below my block? Of course. Aaron nodded expressionlessly. I could tell what you were thinking at one glance. Marvin, who was driving the car, silently rolled his eyes. Feeling that Aaron was so shameless that he even said something like that. He had been so miserable during those couple of days. April was pretty unhappy as well. She couldn't understand how he had suddenly become so good at pretending. And you. Aaron snorted. You said that I might be exaggerating, but you actually should look at yourself. If I wasn't coordinating with you, Esma would have found out long ago. You. April immediately figured it out. Winnie told you about it. She said angrily through clenched teeth. How could she do that? She promised me she wouldn't tell. Relax. I pressed her to find out that you didn't trust my acting skills. Aaron wore an aggrieved expression. He had been bearing a grudge about that. Fortunately, she told me the truth. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known your real purpose. If I hadn't known, to be honest, I'd have been rather disappointed. You broke up with me only because someone threatened you? Whatever plan you had, you did it because you didn't trust me. Hearing that, April felt slightly guilty. However, that feeling quickly faded away. He had known about her plan all along, so he was never really hurt. On the other hand, she thought that he was hurt for real, and because of that, she couldn't sleep or eat. She cried secretly as she hid on her balcony and kept looking down at him, but in the end, it turned out that he was only pretending. What about you? You just said that you've paid off the people who have been watching me long ago. Why did you still pretend not to know the truth then? You acted stealthily and signed that pregnancy contract with me. Why did you do that? Did you trick me into having a baby? 
the more she thought about it, the stranger she felt. I get it. You were with Kiera deliberately to make me feel jealous, weren't you? When I was so jealous and so sad, you showed up with that contract. In order to keep you from leaving me, I'd surely sign the contract. You're so evil. If I hadn't gotten pregnant this time, you'd had never told me the truth. Yeah, so what? At that moment, Aaron saw no reason to keep pretending. He proudly raised his chin like a winner and said, You were planning to have a baby to win me back in the beginning, weren't you? I've only fulfilled your little wish. Looking at his face, April wanted so badly to punch him. She even wanted to slap him to death with a slipper. What a bastard! He got what he wanted, and he was so smug. And why had Winnie exposed all her little secrets? She should have made friends more carefully. All right, I get it. April took a deep breath. I'll have the baby, but it'll be mine. Mine alone. It'll have nothing to do with you. How can that be possible? Can you provide the egg and sperm at the same time? Aaron didn't care what she said. He saw her as a little girl who was venting her spleen. It's in my uterus, so I can choose to have it or not. April gritted her teeth and glared at him. Aaron frowned and suddenly turned very sulky. Our little princess is so adorable. How could you say something like that? She'd be so sad if she heard you in your belly. Her mother doesn't even want her. That was so hurtful. April paused briefly after hearing what he said. However, what she felt was more aggrieved. He had entrapped her. She said those angry words because she wasn't happy about that. April was speechless. The guy was acting as if her baby was going to be a girl for sure. A girl would be nice. A baby girl who would be as cute as Sylvia. If she had a boy like Aaron, she'd probably have a heart attack. Who said I didn't want the baby? I don't want you, April said spitefully. Aaron ignored what she said. He knew that she was trying to tie him down with the baby. He knew how much she loved him. She just refused to admit it. All right, I decided not to be angry with you anymore, so stop holding grudges, Aaron said. April was miffed that he was acting as if he was the bigger man who was forgiving her wrongdoings. April inhaled sharply and ignored him. But she was curious as to how he found out about the scheme. Aaron smiled cheekily when he saw her trying to ignore him. He started stroking her belly with a satisfied grin on his face. April was annoyed after a while and tried to peel his hands away from her body, but to no avail. Don't touch me. April pinched his hands forcefully, causing a bruise on the back of his hand. Aaron frowned. I won't tell you about how Esme got a hold of the evidence if you pinch me again. April was dying from curiosity, so she stopped tormenting him. She asked someone backing her, is she with a rich man? Peter Williams from Panache Holdings, Aaron said. April was stunned. I didn't expect Peter Williams to be so formidable. How did he get a hold of the evidence, even before you did? Aaron's expression looked somber. Peter Williams isn't that formidable. I'm way more influential than he is. Esma knew about this because she came upon a document when she went to visit my dad at his office. She was snooping around and saw the information he had when he ran a background check on you. That was how she managed to grab a hold of the evidence before I could. David felt like something was off and looked into the matter and told me about it. If not, I would have been really heartbroken by your sudden breakup. It all made sense now. The whole time, Esma was only supported by Peter Williams. She had thought there was someone even more formidable supporting her. She was one step ahead of Aaron, after all. It was just her evil scheme. So, your dad was the real mastermind behind this? April said grumpily. Why was he checking up on me? Was he going to use this information against me? He had plans to, but decided against it after he divorced my mother. Aaron decided to tell her the truth after some hesitation. He didn't hide the document well, but I scolded him about it. Don't worry, he won't do such things again. He has accepted you now. April was in disbelief. 
David accepted her. Wasn't he going on about Aaron marrying Jenica earlier on? Esma was the main issue now. Leave Esma to me. Aaron chuckled coldly. How dare she threaten you in our relationship? The nerve of her! Does she really think she's got it all now that she has Peter Williams? She thinks that she can manipulate our feelings and our lives? But she didn't expect me to set up a trap around her. Now I'm just waiting for her to make a fool out of herself. April looked at him in bewilderment. I just want to get a hold of the evidence. I'm worried that she would ruin it if she was antagonized. Don't worry. I'll make her hand it over willingly. If she enjoys threatening others, I will let her have a taste of her own medicine. Aaron sunk his body into the sofa and smiled eerily. April, I will let you know that you have underestimated your man. Hearing that, April sighed with relief. Since Aaron was able to deal with the people who had been helping Esma, she didn't need to worry. In fact, I was thinking that maybe I should tell you the truth. Last time when I talked to Esma on the phone, I felt that she might not give me the evidence unless you got together with Jenica. You should have thought about that long ago. Aaron snorted. How could you believe what a sneaky person said? Should I call you innocent or naive? Hearing his sarcastic talk, April felt frustrated. She responded grumpily. How dare you say that? If it wasn't for your father, would I possibly have fallen into her trap? Aaron crossed his arms and said, My father can't do anything right. And my woman is innocent and naive. The people around me really make me worry. April was speechless. She decided not to say anything. In the hospital, Aaron found someone he knew who guided him and April straight to the B ultrasonic room. April laid on the small bed and the doctor put the probe on her belly. Aaron stood beside her, gazing straight at the computer screen. Doctor, is my wife pregnant? Hmm. The doctor spent quite a while staring at the screen before nodding. The fetus is already in her uterus. As the doctor confirmed it personally, Aaron got excited again. I saw it, he said. The little princess is developing pretty well. The corners of the doctor's mouth twitched slightly. However, as the president had told her to be extra nice to Aaron, she asked patiently, Mr. Bennett, maybe you're looking at the wrong area? I'm not. That black sphere, isn't that my daughter? Aaron pointed at the screen. That's not. That's just a shadow, the doctor said. The baby is a tiny embryo now. Most people can't see it unless they're professionally trained. Even when the tiny baby is 30 weeks old, some parents may still not be able to recognize its eyes and nose from the B ultrasonic image. Also, it might not be a girl. We can't tell yet. Why would the hospital have doctors for B ultrasounds if everyone could read a B ultrasonic image? April laid on the bed and raised her head as much as possible. She wanted to see the image, but couldn't. So at last, she gave up and said to the doctor, Doctor, just don't say that to him. He only wants a daughter. Really? The doctor laughed. Your husband is pretty nice. Nowadays, many men want boys to carry on their family names. Some fathers ask for an abortion when they find out their wives are pregnant with girls. I've seen lots of that. Those women really suffered. Hearing the word husband, April's cheeks burned slightly. She was too shy to explain that Aaron wasn't her husband. She didn't want people to know that she was pregnant before marriage. After hearing what the doctor said, Aaron wore a cold face and said, Every little girl is a baby angel. Why abort them? Those fathers should be in prison. The doctor smiled. Little girls aren't the only angels. Little boys are too. Boys are devils, Aaron said without thinking. Hearing that, the doctor glanced at April with a weird expression. She hoped that April was having a girl, as her husband seemed to really not like boys. Also, doctor, is there anything that my wife should pay extra attention to? Aaron asked in a low voice. He was now seeing April as his wife, for sure. Um, I think you should consult your gynecologist about that, said the doctor. They're the specialists for that. 
Later, you also need to do a blood test. Erin took April to the gynecologist. After the doctor reviewed the ultrasound, she said in a reassuring voice, Don't worry. Your child is developing fine and your wife is young. It should be a smooth pregnancy. Hmm. She eats and drinks well. Aaron nodded his head and agreed. The doctor smiled. It's good that she can eat. But she likes to stay up late at night because of her work. Most days she goes to bed around 2 to 3 o'clock in the morning, Aaron said. Then suddenly, Doctor, would it affect our baby? Of course she should try to rest more and avoid staying up late at night, the doctor said. Did you hear that? I don't think you should go to New Jersey this month for your work. Don't tire yourself out too much. Aaron said to April, You have to think about our little princess. Although April didn't look forward to going back, she felt indignant about his bossy tone of voice. I already dubbed the film for two days, and the company would definitely make me compensate them for breaking the contract, too. April said, So what? I can pay for the compensation fees. I don't care how much it would be. Aaron said as he pulled a chair to sit next to the doctor. He fished out a notebook and a pen. What else should I pay attention to, doctor? I'll write them down. There were two intern doctors standing next to them whispering to each other. Damn, her husband is so handsome and so doting on her and her baby. What an unfair world. Yeah, so many pregnant mothers come from their doctor's appointments by themselves. I'm so envious of her. She's so pretty, after all. Well, there are pretty girls married to scumbags. Not all handsome rich men are responsible. That's true. Some men don't even care when their wives get pregnant. They still expect their wives to serve them when they're carrying their child. April could hear their conversation and she felt content. They were praising her man and her relationship. She was still a little worried that the only reason why Aaron was so excited was because he was under the impression that she was carrying a baby girl. She wondered if he would show as much concern if she was carrying a baby.